The BMW Z4 GT3 was BMW's contender in the FIA GT3 class. Based on the E89 series Z4, this debuted in 2010 and was made available to independent teams as well. This raced against other contenders from the likes of Porsche, Mercedes-Benz, Lamborghini and Ferrari and it held its own up until its last season in 2015. It doesn't race around anymore but it was fun while it lasted. Let's try and capture some of that magic. Today, here at the Silverstone National Circuit. Hi there, my name is Neil and welcome to my channel. We are into day 5 at the Silverstone National Circuit, the last day where we take a race car around the track. Our weapon of choice today is the BMW Z4 GT3. First, I'm going to have this 5 lap race with 7 of the other Z4 GT3s to try and find out what a fast competitive lap time in this car at the Silverstone National Circuit is. Then we go hot lapping trying to chase down the lap times that we have seen during the race and try and get consistent at it. Then we get to the breakdown where we deep dive into the fastest lap from our hot lapping session and try and find out the technical details like every breaking point, turning, exit, stuff like that. By the way something to mention here, please ignore the noises in the background. It's a busier day than usual at the market where I live. Also, I'm recording this a bit earlier than I usually do, so just bear with that, alright? With that out of the way, join you at the end of the race. Well, we are done with the race here and I somehow got the fastest lap, a 55.290. Uh, now, disclaimer here, it really was a one lap wonder. My other times hovered somewhere between the mid 55s. As you can see, I did a last lap in 55.655. I also got the um, fastest first sector. Didn't quite manage the second sector. I was beaten by car number 3 by just 0.1 of a second. But as you can see, the second sector was pretty even. It, star it ranged just between 26.6 .6 to 26.8. So just a narrow gap there. Same goes for the first sector as well. I mean, apart from my time of 28.4, all the other cars did uh, 28.7 and 28.8. So yeah, there's that. The mm, lap times vary between 55.479 by car number 3 and 55.735, that was car number 6. Now, unlike the last two videos where my opponent cars underperformed in the big race and set lap times higher than usual, these are all very, very competitive lap times. I mean, I have seen cars drop down into a very low 56, so 56.1 or 2. So yeah, let's keep that in mind. Uh, that's our window here. Uh, targeting uh, mid to high 55s but if it gets into uh, low 56 that's not much of a big deal it's still a competitive time so let's go hot lapping now all right before we start uh, let's take a look at the setup I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use a stock setting of tires the default setting really which is slick medium this car also has a slick hard and a slick soft we are going with the medium because that's the tire our benchmark times are set on. Uh, we are going with the stock fuel capacity. We will get back to electronics later. Arrow, the front splitter is... It really has only two settings, 0 or 1. We are going with 1, the default setting. Same with the rear wing, a 5 degree angle. This being a race car, there is a lot of modifications available. As you can see, all the settings are bone stock, the default settings really. This is a race car, there are no stock settings. The only thing we are going to change is turn the traction control off and tune down the ABS a little bit. 5, the default setting is way too aggressive for me. Let's set it to 2 and see where that takes us. Alright, let's go driving now. Alright, here we go, starting our lap. Another race cars with their slick tires. They can really use a lap or two under their belt to warm up its tires first. Which is why every race 
before the actual race starts, the cars have a warm-up lap. Right, so let's talk about the car a little bit, shall we? So this thing uh, is based on the BMW E89 Z4, which replaced the E85 model back in 2009 and was in production until 2016. It is now replaced by the G29 model since 2018, the one that famously shares its underpinnings with the Mark V Toyota Supra. Topic for another day. So this thing, the GT3 race car, came out in 2010. And it was very competitive. In its debut season, it came second at the 24 hours of Spa Franco shop. And BMW kept to uh, improving it throughout its life cycle to the point where in its final year in 2015 it actually won the 24 hours of spa francorchamps so the regular uh, e89 z4 uses a three liter straight six this doesn't this actually uses a 4.4 liter v8 based on the one from E92 M3. This thing produces roughly somewhere around 500 horsepower, but this is light. It lays less than 1.2 tons. And with that giant rear wing on the back, this thing is all about downforce. Which is to say just like any other race car in the world really. Okay, we're already into the 56s, so the tires are warming up nicely here. Now I must say the lap time of 55.290, the one that we managed during the race, I mean it is doable. Obviously I did it, but I'm not sure I can replicate that in our hot laps. But we can surely get close, we can try. biggest difference between a race car and a road car apart from the downforce are the brakes they really are I mean having driven the road cars for the whole week finishing off the week with a race car it really does feel a lot different in the braking zone Okay, a lot of low 56 is we need to pick up the pace now. I said that's enough. Let's go look at the lap times now. Whoa, that was a long session. Anyway, the fastest time was 55.370. A pretty good time. I'm quite happy with it. Uh, I did not manage any other time uh, this side of 55.5 really, but uh, I did a lot of 55.6s and 7s here and there, even a few 55.8 nine the other times are in the low 56 region uh, apart from the first uh, five or six laps i was talking about the car a lot that's another reflection of what difference concentration makes in driving a proper race car with downforce i mean that's not much of a problem while driving the road cars as you have seen throughout the week uh, the initial laps after the first lap all the times right from the second lap 
become pretty much consistent. Here though, in the first two laps, okay, granted, they, the tires were not that warm. They slick tires, they really need a lot of temperature to operate at their optimum. Followed by four or five more laps where I was just talking about the car. All the other times are pretty consistent. Uh, of course, the fastest time, as I said, was 55.370. But if you look at the others, all the times range from a 55.6 up to a low 55, 56.2. Uh, Even looking at the sector times, a 28.564 and 26.806 in the fastest lap, they are pretty much uh, near the top. Although, worth pointing out here, in sector 2, Apart from that one in lap 28 and uh, 3 or 4 other here and there, all the times were above 27. So, uh, fair to say, sector 2 was my weak link. Anyway, a uh, pretty fast time right around the top uh, in sector 1. Fine, let's go to the breakdown. Starting at the start finish straight, coming up is the first corner, the cops. Look at the red and white wall on the right. As soon as that last patch of red passes you, hit your brakes hard. Now you might want to carry your brakes into the corner a bit more than I did and be more gentle with your throttle or this may happen. Yup, this car is notorious for losing its rear end while riding the curbs. So just be careful while exploring the track limits. Now we have already established that I didn't lose much time for this one. So let's just continue on to the next corner, the Brooklands. Keep your car on the right for this one. As you turn in, half past the curves on the left, hit your brakes hard. Carry your brakes into the field. As you gently let go, looking for a late apex and gently floor your throttle on the exit. Now I did take this corner in third, but you can also take it in second. It doesn't make much of a difference. Onto the club straight now, coming up is Brooklands. Keep your car on the right. Use the building on the right for this one. As soon as it goes past your field of vision, hit your brakes hard. Gently let go as you turn into Brooklands. As you go past the apex, give it a short burst of acceleration towards the field. Give it a short dab at the entry, modulate your throttle around the corner, looking for a late apex once again and slow your throttle on the exit. Flat out through the final corner, the wood coat, as this 4.4 liter German V8 screams past the start finish line in 55.370. So that's it for today. Let me know your thoughts about this video down in the comment box below. Also, if you have any preference of cars or tracks that you want to be featured in a future episode in this channel, comment them down and I shall try to do that. While you're down there, hit your favorite buttons, the like, share, subscribe, and the bell notification icon, and I'll see you in my next video. Once again, Apologize for all those engine sounds and honking in the background. Let's hope that the next time you see me, you don't have to deal with all that. Until then, drive hard, drive safe. Take care.